Good morning. <laughs> from Kira Hinehan Consulting. I'm an inner power educator and a life and business coach and mentor. And I'm here this morning to have the chat and have a bit of crack with Christine McGonagall. Good morning, Christine. How are you doing? I'm great, Kira. Thanks very much. Good morning. Good stuff. Good stuff. It's great to have you with us. What's the weather like up with yours? It's not um, the, the best now. Yes, last week now was beautiful. Sun split in the rocks, but it's, it's raining today. But well, the farmer's um, happy. Tell everybody that when you showed us the little video of your bliss up there, I got mildly jealous. The beach, the beach, and more beach. Wow. Mm. You're yeah, that was only one tiny part of it. Yeah, that was um, Lingan Bay that I showed you, and um, Tola Bay. Oh so yeah, and they're, they're very close to one another, but that's just a very, very small part of the Inishbone Peninsula. So yeah. So that's my backyard. I'd never leave. I would never leave. I don't tell that. <laughs> Christine, I would love if you would tell us a little bit about what you do and who you are. If you let everybody know. Okay, um, I'm a menopause educator and mentor. So what that means is I educate ladies on their menopause. Um, there's a lot to the menopause that a lot of people don't realize, not even the medical profession. So um, because of my own background and what I went through myself with the menopause and still on a daily basis I, I deal with um, and uh, the suffering that I went through, um, I've come forward and decided that I wanted to help other women. Um, not only that as well, I had to leave my employment because of the menopause and also the lack of knowledge surrounding it that I could have made myself better a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so this whole, this whole idea of what can be done, of what can be done to help ladies who are going through menopause, because obviously when you get to a certain age, a lot of women go through it. It's not something that many, many people bypass. What can you do? What can women do? What can doctors do? You know, what can be done to to help in that area? Well, first of all, women need to recognize the symptoms. There are between 50 and 70 symptoms of menopause. Now, that might seem a wee bit exaggerated, but there are that many. Um, I would say I would be in the mid 60s of, of the um, symptoms that I took. I didn't take them all at the one time. I'm in my 10th year of menopause, whereas they say on average you could maybe you could maybe be four years on average it'll take a woman to actually pass from perimenopause to postmenopause. Um, I'm in that 10 year period um, and no sign of it yet. Uh, the symptoms easing on me. Um, but like that, um, it's up to me to deal with it and how I decide that I want to deal with it. And what I had to do was go and find out the information for myself. So I went to Dr. Google and that just confused me even more because I'm, I'm awful. I hate taking tablets. I don't like to take an even paracetamol or panadol. Um, I like to do things naturally because I believe a lot in my gut health. So I really, really, when I did realize uh, what was going on with me, I really struggled um, to get myself in the, in the right um, area of treatment, for want of a better word, um, until I decided right now I know who the specialists are. I'm just going to go and talk to them. And I did and learned a lot a lot and realized that I am now going through the menopause. I'm on HRT. I am supporting my bone, heart and brain health. And um, and I don't take any tablets. It's as simple as that. Now, in your answer to your question about doctors, not all doctors have been trained in menopause. Okay. There is a training available which Dr. Deirdre Lundy does go around the country and she holds training sessions um, in women's health from puberty right up to um, menopause uh, stage. And we need doctors to come out and actually attend those meetings and those trainings. They're not doing that. A lot of doctors are letting their own opinion come in on what 
they may think what their opinion is on HRT without having the proper education. Now, there, to say the doctors aren't um, educated in menopause is true, but it's not their fault because they had, did not receive that training when they were coming through medical college. Unless from that time to now they have gone and done some training from the British Menopause Society or through that direction, they are not trained as a menopause doctor. What I would love to see happen is that at least one or two doctors from every practice would attend one of Deirdre Lundy's trainings okay. and have the basic knowledge of menopause. That would be massive in this country towards helping women's health. Have the basic knowledge and then from there on, send that woman to a specialist. And what we need to do as well is get specialists through the HSC. Because mm -hmm. not every woman can afford to go privately to a menopause specialist. And for possibly 50% of women, a menopause specialist is what they need. Okay. Wow, it's so in depth. Like I would never have known any of that. Um, and very interesting to see that doctors aren't as, I suppose, as educated as they could be on, on what's necessary. But the fact that this doctor, Deirdre Lundry, is that what you said her name was? Um, That's right, yes. The fact that she's there and she's available would signify and, and, and sort of say that it would be fantastic for these doctors to actually go and be educated by her. You know, because they're obviously going to be faced with numerous women who are coming in with various symptoms. Are there specific symptoms? And then are there some that you would consider completely off the wall that a woman wouldn't even realize? Yeah, the, a lot of women would present possibly uh, very tearful and they would just feeling that they can't cope. And that would come down to brain fog and then your anxiety would kick in and, you know, that would be very common and it's misdiagnosed as depression. So they're given antidepressants, which wow. is wrong. It's wrong. It needs more in depth. But, I'll, you know, and, and a lot of people think menopause, oh, sure, it's a few hot sweats and sure, they'll be all right, they'll be fine, they'll go on, you know. It won't be fine. I ended up suicidal. I really thought I'd lost my mind. I thought I had dementia. I self-diagnosed at home because I couldn't take that chance of going to the doctor for fear of being sent elsewhere and being diagnosed by dementia and being locked up because that's how bad I was. I went from one room in the house to the other and uh, tried to backtrack all day to figure out why I left that room to come here and then I'd go to that room and then I couldn't remember why I went to that room and I'd backtrack again. And that, that exhausted me. And not only that, the body pain that I experienced was excruciating and debilitating. Now, that body pain can often be mistaken as um, fibromyalgia okay. and misdiagnosed as well, whereas it's not. See, what happens when you start to go through perimenopause? You are losing your estrogen. You're losing your hormones. So basically, the, the protein, collagen, that, that's gone. Estrogen provides all that. So that's gone. So a woman's body is drying up from the inside. Literally drying up. So another one that the women will possibly, only 7% actually go to their doctor with this. And wow. Because this is, and I'm talking about a dry vagina. A lot of women will just go to the chemist and ask for a treatment for thrush. It's not thrush, it's dry vagina. Your estrogen has dried up. All your skin gets thinner inside, inside your vagina and your vulva. And it causes a burning sensation and it's excruciating. A lot of women have left their job and are living very painful lives with dry vaginas, not realizing what it is. And doctors aren't realizing either. But let me just touch there, Kira, on GPs. As you were saying there, they're not trained enough and where we think they should be trained. Yes, we think they should be trained, but in all fairness to GPs, they are run off their feet. They're told you've got 10 minutes here. You have 10 minutes here. 10 minutes to a menopausal lady is no good. Absolutely no good. None. So it's not the GP's fault. Mm -hmm. It's not the patient's fault. 
there's a massive gap there that needs filled and it needs filled by the HSC because there's so many women on and especially when women get to a certain age and especially if they lose their jobs and then they are relying on a medical card they don't have this extra money to go and see a, a menopause specialist whereas if you had a GP on the ground that you could work with closely should that be yes we we book you in for a double appointment here so we've got 20 minutes do you know what I mean we can sit down we can work on this much so far and then you can come back then in two weeks time we'll do another double appointment that could be worked in there, there can be a relation built between the patient and the GP mm -hmm. that things can be sorted that every woman can get the right treatment that they need for now for now I'm working on the specialist for the HSC. And there's other groups in Ireland as well who are doing the same. There's some fabulous groups in Ireland too that are doing fabulous work, pushing forward, looking for more help and getting menopause recognised in Ireland. It's incredible to learn, even just, I'm sure this is just the tip of the iceberg, but hmm. how incredibly uncomfortable, agonising and awkward and and not normal for women to be thinking this is thrush and it isn't, to be thinking this is depression and it isn't, to be pigeonholed into a box that they're not sure how to ask to get out of because they're not sure of what they're not sure of. There's a great saying, you don't know what you don't know. Um, yeah. I'm delighted that you're bringing the attention to this that it actually needs because obviously we have half the population as women. So it's yes. fantastic that they're actually going to be heard and heard at a level that's very necessary because as you're saying, you're going through this for 10 years. Some women go through it for four. You don't know how long it's going to happen. There's no, you know, one size fits all. So it's incredible to bring attention to this and open the floor so that women can feel like they can ask more questions. You know, that's vital. Yeah, um Another thing as well is um, when a woman does go to the doctors and a doctor will say, well, we'll do blood tests. If a lady is 45 or over, you do not do blood tests. You go by symptom only. It's only a woman under 45. And then if a woman under 40 presents, that's, that's like I started at 39 even though not once was it ever said to me you're going through menopause or a wonder could it be menopause and I've had MRIs I've had scans I've had x-rays I've had surgery all of which which possibly could have been avoided and now like I'm hitting 49 this year and um, you know the average age of a menopausal lady is 51 and the main killer of um, women our age is heart failure. A lot of women think when they're going through menopause, oh, I'm not touching that HRT, I can't touch it, or I can't take it anyway. People say, well, no, I can't take that. My aunt from my mother and, and whoever else had breast cancer before. That does not mean you can't take it. It okay. really doesn't. Because it has been scientifically, there's been medical studies done and proven that um, heart um, HRT actually um, supports women with their heart. It uh, protects their heart uh, function, and it also HRT is also used as a medication for osteoporosis. Okay. So anybody who has been diagnosed with osteoporosis, HRT will actually mend your brittle bone. Yeah, there's so much in it, you know, so much in it. There's a lot, there's a lot, like, uh, the, you know, there's, um, like, women worry about breast cancer. Um, I know this might sound a bit brutal, but if you're going to take breast cancer, you will take it, whether you take HRT or not. Okay. The gene is there in you, you will take it. But a lot of people, well, a lot of women have said to me, oh, you couldn't touch that because you're a woman out the road. Um, she was on HRT and three months later she had breast cancer. It wasn't the HRT that made her take breast cancer. The yeah. HRT, yes, may have uh, enforced her breast cancer to come to the fore quicker. 
Okay. Because it's all about estrogen recept- receptors. We have estrogen receptors in our bodies everywhere. Everywhere. So if you have a hormone um, based uh, cancer, which would be from the breast, that is going to enhance your symptoms quicker. Whereas the HRT will get the blame, whereas it's not, it was there. It just has brought us to the fore. Um, women who like even forget about HRT, the likes of somebody who smokes, uh, it goes up to eight, in, in eight women in a thousand. It goes from four to eight if you smoke, you're at risk of taking breast cancer. If you smoke and take a drink, like one unit of wine a night, that goes up by 16, that's 16%. But then if you find yourself like me, who now, after going off the cigarettes, and um, between not having um, the, not being as active as I was because of the body pain and everything. And then of course, taking on board and the responsibility of the hand to mouth disease I had as well, with going off the cigarettes, I put on five and a half stone. So I would be, um, you, you would say I would be obese. So I'm in the risk, very high risk category at the moment of breast cancer and heart failure because of my weight, not of okay. my HRT, not of the HRT. Mm. And then other women would worry as well about stroke, that they've either had a stroke or there's a history of stroke within the family. So they would say, oh, I can't take, my doctor even told me I can't take HRT. Well, I'm sorry, your doctor is wrong. There are so many different forms of HRT. Now, if you told me that um, I'd had a stroke before and I wanted you, that my doctors tell me I want you to take these tablets and they're HRT and I look into it more in this tablet form, I wouldn't take them either. Because my uh, gut and my liver and everything has to work with that and digest it. What I would be doing is the, the body identical, and this is body identical to the hormones we've lost, it's a piece of gel. That's all it is. You rub it on your arms. So it's transdermal. It goes in through the arms and through the skin, straight into the bloodstream. Don't need to worry about your liver or anything like that or blood clots. Body identical, it comes in. It's an Easter dial. There's so much to actually put together, you know. So no wonder 10 minutes isn't enough. No wonder even maybe 20 minutes isn't enough. When you're walking in and you're describing you know. your symptoms and your fears and your worries and your past history and the potential of weight, the potential of smoking, the potential of drinking, the potential of breast cancer, the potential of the symptoms, the potential of everything. And in 10 minutes, you're supposed to get this entire conversation into your doctor mm-hmm. who's frabble and who goes, no, because depression, no, because thrush, no, because whatever it is. It's a that sounds like a minefield. That sounds like there needs to be, like you're saying, a HSE maybe led system where every woman who's peri in it and post menopause are actually being seen in a different way, you know, in clinics, specific clinics. Mm-hmm. And is that a possibility? Do you think that that would be a possibility? <clears throat> At the moment, when we're in lockdown, and that there's obviously there's more other things that are being more prioritized. Mm-hmm. But um, yes, full, though it will be full steam ahead after there is ongoing campaigns, um, and we're, we won't be letting up. Um, but at the moment, there is um, a couple of other, you know, um, groups within Ireland, and they would be campaigning in some directions where. My direction is at the moment is dealing with women within the system here and now and how to build that relationship with their doctor now. And also as well, if anybody immediately needed a consultation online, that can be done. Okay. And you can get a, a prescription with that as well. Um, can I just touch on something else as well, Kira, which is very important, and that's incontinence. You know, as you said, you're sitting, you're going through all this with your doctor, and then you let a little cough or sneeze out of you, and you're wetting yourself. And there's something that really, really annoys me, is all these ads on the TV saying, isn't this pretty? Now, there's a woman wearing a bloody nappy. Isn't this pretty? And I'm going, what? No. There's other women standing saying, well, sure, we wet ourselves a bit, but sure, we're mummies, and, and for to be a mummy, and if I have to wet myself a bit, that's fine. It's not fine. 
Mm-hmm. You need yep. localized estrogen to treat your vagina, which will also help build up your bladder walls and it will stop you from wetting yourself. Yeah. You need yeah. educated. Like I would. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, 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 you know, but I'm sorry, I'm 48 and the, the you know, um, I've had six children and I, I'm going through incontinence as well, but I'm on the right treatment. It hasn't mm. completely cleared up yet, but it will. Um, and then there's other forms of treatment that I can do as well to completely heal that because yes, uh, the localized estrogen, which is a little gel or a little pessary or a little small tiny tablet called Vagifem um, and that's inserted into the vagina twice a week. Okay. Twice a week. That's it. <clears throat> Believe it or not, if it's gotten time, if it's gotten time, you will be fine. Mm-hmm. You will avoid all this mad dryness and this, but there's some women who don't recognize and their doctors don't recognize and even the the, the, the pharmacists need to be, be trained in this and, and even the, the receptive you know the staff and the chemists if yeah. they see so much thrush things going on they need to be looking up and looking to see what age of a woman is in front of them yeah. maybe hand them a leaflet on on dry vaginas mm-hmm. you know there's an there's an idea there now mm-hmm. um yeah right <laughs> you know so it's a very good idea and give that lady something to think on you know to read and, and she, cause she can turn around and go when she goes home she can take it out of, you know that woman doesn't even need to be spoken to. That leaflet can be put into the bag, into the bag. wrapped up. Yeah. Take it home, the privacy of her home. Take out the leaflet and go. Well, I've got that. I've got that. I've got that. I've got that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then phone up your doctor and ask the receptionist who deals. Who is the doctor that deals with menopause within your practice? Mm. And if she says, I don't know. Get on to me and I'll ring them. <laughs> yeah, they need to know. Yeah, that's a good idea. Two things they need in there. To know. As a, I, I was a movement specialist for 20 years, part of, of, of what I did. And something that used to pop up all of the time was women with weak pelvic floor muscles. And with no idea in the world of how to strengthen those pelvic floor muscles. In fact, with no idea in the world what their pelvic floor muscles even were. And every woman, and I trained women, female clients, every woman walked in the door and said, when I sneeze, I wet myself. When I cough, I wet myself. And I'm sitting there going, that's not okay. It's totally normal because it happens to pretty much every woman who's walking in the door, but it's not okay and it doesn't have to be normal. And then I would watch some of my American counterparts and my American friends. And sometimes they have clinics in the UK as well where they had specifically trained um, women who were trained in how to help you encourage and strengthen your pelvic floor muscles. And they would do that pre you having a baby at all, during your pregnancy and post your pregnancy. So I see a a combination of female health from, from possibly the age of 13 to post-menopause, you know, like that it's taken more seriously, that we're actually looking at the pelvic area of a female in a much more, taking it in a much more important sense and actually helping women understand what's necessary and what's healthy and what's right and what's wrong. You know, like this isn't okay and this can be helped. This is okay. I mean, what you're doing is you're shining a light on female health, even though you're focusing on the menopause. Hopefully, it will open up a lot more avenues for female health. Yeah, as uh, just going, I'll take for, for, for the likes of ourselves, for example, mm-hmm. and we'll widen on that then. Um, the likes of, we didn't get to where we are because we just put up with something. Uh-huh. We moved on further. Uh-huh. Whereas a lot of women, and um, and it's just it, it's the way we are. We get up and we get on with things. 
and we push forward. Now, a lot of women will turn around and say to you, well, I'm just a mother and I just, I'm at home and whatever. That woman is running a full-blown business, keeping the roof over that head and doing the bills mm-hmm. and doing this, doing everything within, keeping those children happy, making sure the car's running and going from A to B, run, 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 run. Women don't realize how strong they are mm-hmm. and how well they do something. But the worst thing that they do is look after themselves. And that's something that needs to change. Women need to realize that it's all right to turn around and say, I need looking after here. This is not normal. Mm -hmm. And I need to go and look about it. And it's not okay to put up with it. And it's not okay to go from wearing a nappy as a baby, being potty trained, going in and going through puberty, wearing pads, moving on further in your life, getting your productive years, um, wetting yourself, wearing the pads again because you're after childbirth and everything. And then you're going through perimenopause and you're back to pads again. And now on the TV, they're telling you to wear a bloody nappy. No, women need to turn around and say, no, this is not acceptable. I need to go and look about it. But the doctors need to know what a woman is presenting with. Mm -hmm. For sure. They need to know what a woman is presenting with, but women are not presenting to the doctors. They are putting up with it, and they shouldn't. They shouldn't. I'm certainly not going to. So would you say that the first word of call is for women to learn, to understand what they're going through, to, to start to question the things that are happening in our own bodies, number one? Start and to question, mm-hmm. but ask. Yeah ask people speak up because you'll find that you're not the only one you're certainly not the only one we'll go back to menopause there again because it's all under, it's all under one umbrella 25 percent of women will as i say i sail through this you know without them even realize it may not even have hit them yet mm-hmm. you know or they may have come up against uh x y and z and they didn't associate it with menopause and they'll turn around and tell you, oh, I'm fine just for a bit of arthritis. Hello, <laughs> you have arthritis, you know? Okay. Um, you know, the mind boggles. But, that, but they're, they're not educated. They're not educated. They don't know. Um, but like that, um, I've lost my train of thought now. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's my dog. It happens to the best of every one of us. <laughs> oh yes, it was the that the twenty five percent that will tell you that they'll sail through it. Okay, now there's seventy five percent left, mm-hmm. and you know twenty five percent of that seventy five will then be severe, like I was, and. It, you know, at some stage they don't realise it, but every one of them will touch a bit on dry vagina. A massive thing that I learned only this week was that nursing homes, if you go into a nursing home and you see some poor woman sitting in a chair, you see her wiggling about because she's uncomfortable. What do you think that woman's suffering with? Between incontinence and, and her dry vagina, you know? And that, and when that, that, that is it, 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 it's just boundering on, on neglect. Mm, it really is. And as you said, it it's going back to it the is. fact that people don't know what they don't know and they haven't asked questions. And probably the staff that are in that place don't know what they don't, they don't know, know and they haven't asked any questions. So it's, it's a horrible circle that hasn't been... I suppose, infiltrated. You no, know, this isn't a finger pointing session and it's never going to be a finger pointing yeah. session. Yeah. It's, 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 it, my aim is, is look, we have, this is what's here. This is what's mm-hmm. on the table. It's proven fact. There's studies to prove it. What are we going to do? Here's what I want to do. Will you come and talk to me? You yeah. may be a GP. You may be a specialist. You may be a gynecologist. You may be my next door neighbour. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter who or what you are, there's an issue here, we'll come together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's power in numbers. Mm-hmm. It isn't about who or what you are or anybody better than the other. The fact is mm-hmm. there's an issue here. And if we get right to the bottom of sorting out the proper issues, you'll find there'll be less waiting lists on other medical waiting lists around the country if women start getting treated properly. Can I ask you 
what the platform is that you've set up. So what's it called and where can people contact you? Because I think that this is really important for mm. all women, whoever hears this of any age. In fact, maybe not just menopausal because forearmed is forewarned or forewarned is forearmed. So pre-perimenopausal also, just women in general, mm -hmm. where can they come that they can land and go, okay, here's a safe space for me to ask whatever question I want and know that I'm normal. Whatever is going on, it's fine and I can say it out here. Yeah, okay. So we're the irishmenopausalmommy.com. That's our website. And we're the Irish Menopausal Mommy on Facebook. That is an open page where there are loads of information and guidelines of how, for even for, for GPs, of how your um, menopause should be treated. And then from that, there is also a private group and it's for women only. Now, when I say the, 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 the women only, that is for women only to express themselves or message me privately. Okay. Um, and but they can openly speak. It is private, and there will only ever be women on it. The other open page is there as well for men to see, because we will be doing a lot of articles for men because men are very important in this, because they're part of our our lives, and they need to be educated as well on how to deal with a menopausal woman, especially when maybe she's not even recognised herself that she's menopausal. Yeah, of course. He could be, a, 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 you know, a great, you know, he, men are, like if you're in a relationship, it, it's it's half and half. Mm -hmm. And he could be the support that you need, or he could be the push that you need to actually go and look about yourself. If For there's sure. communication. It, it's like us dealing with doctors now, it's the same as dealing with a partner's communication is key. Mm -hmm. to keep it all together. Because we deserve it. We deserve to have good relationships. We deserve to have good relationships with our doctors. And we deserve to be able to stay at our work and stay in our jobs and earn our income. We may be in our late 40s, early 50s or whatever, but far from over. I'm not leaving here until I'm at least 103. <laughs> I like so, it. <laughs> my family's nearly rare now. You know, I have a lot of living to do and I intend to do it. And I intend mm. to do it with a really good quality of life. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the whole point. Now, we've spoken a lot about HRT. A lot of women, no matter what you'll tell them, what evidence you put in front of them will not want to take it. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Because at the end of the day, every person is different and every person's entitled to their own opinion and to, to be individually treated. It's their choice. But every person deserves support, no matter what. Okay. And that's, that's what the Facebook pages are right. You know, so, you know, if you, it doesn't matter whether you're taking HRT or not, you know, the support will be there. You'll be shown um, evidence, you know, different articles and things or whatever. It's up to you whether you read them or not. If you read them and you still don't want them, that's fine. Okay. But it's there to just vent, mm -hmm. talk, you know, because, uh, you know, so, some simple little things can build into big, big things. And to a woman, especially now in lockdown, and the anxiety starts to build, mm -hmm. it can be massive. Yeah. Whereas if you have somebody else to talk to, or vent at, or somebody else turns around and says, oh, I'm the same. And you know us women, we love a wee session, you know? <laughs> it can feel good for sure. <laughs> you know? And that's okay. And you do that. And then you make friends. You yeah. make friends. And you learn a lot. You learn, a, there's, there's little tricks of the trade, just even, you know, simple little things. You know, but what we're going to be doing as well on the on the Irish menopausal page is, um, as I said, I mentioned before, Kira, I've put on five stone. So, I have a life coach, yourself, and I have a nutritionist and trainer, and that's Jennifer Barn. Um, so we're going to be doing some lives. Um, uh, a few pre-recorded things because a lot of things I'm gonna as you know um, I'm a businesswoman entrepreneur and I have a very 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 busy lifestyle so I am going to be you know up at, up and at it at five o'clock so I could be recording maybe at five o'clock in the morning or I could be um, prepping a meal or something at, at 10 or 11 o'clock at night so that that would be for during the day or, or the next day or whatever but we just the whole point of it is is to keep it laxy daisy let everybody see look this, this menopause it, it's normal it is normal mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And it's okay, and it's going to take time. It's there for the rest of your life. It doesn't go away. People say, I'm done with the menopause. I'm finished. You're not. When you go in the box, that's when you're done. You're a menopausal woman to the end of your days. That's it. And you may not have any more symptoms, but you're still a menopausal woman. And I'll be running with my little statue. That'll be in the palm of my hand when I go into the box. <laughs> Because it's not, I, well, it's great for the skin. Okay. Your skin, your hair. My hair has never been as healthy. Now, 18 months ago, my hair was, I was losing a lot of it. A lot. Okay. So that's, a, you know, your collagen, it, it's it's just, mm. that, it's that's what keeps me standing. Yeah. Like, you, every woman needs her hormones and she needs to replace her hormones. People mm. will say, oh, I do it the natural way. This is gel derived from a yam plant but go through a pharmaceutical setting to get to the likes of me. Brilliant. Is it natural to me? Yes, it is. It's doing, I'm not having to take tablets or anything. I'm on a very high dose now at the moment because mm-hmm. of, of my symptoms and because of, like I know if I don't take mine at a certain time in the morning within that, that time frame, I know it for the rest of the day. I will okay. get anxiety. I will get sore. Do you know what I mean? I'm very sensitive to the treatment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to any treatment but um yeah um as time goes on and as my symptoms ease i will still be taking one of these a day okay yeah just to protect my bone and, and heart health as i get older but i think that's another that's another piece for sure it's that mm-hmm. that feeling of it's a bit like when you take a dose of antibiotics right mm-hmm. so before the antibiotics you didn't take your multivitamins or your minerals or maybe you weren't healthy and you took the dose of antibiotics and the dose of antibiotics lasts seven days. And when you're finished with that dose of antibiotics, you're done. And you don't go and you don't take any vitamins or any minerals or anything after the fact or probiotics because you're finished your course. So in people's minds, when they're finished their course of something, that's it done and dusted. We don't have to look after it again. But it's the pre-care and the aftercare that we give ourselves in every situation of life. It's not about the moments when you're sick or when you're sore, or when you're uncomfortable. It's about preparing, and I don't mean preparing as in looking at, okay, I'm going to get sore. It's about minding yourself, coming up to any particular important point of life, and giving yourself the best health, the best nutrition, the best, I suppose, the best products that work for you, and not stopping them when you stop being sore. Because Mm -hmm. if something's working for you, if something is making you feel better, if something is making you feel healthier and happier and better in your body and in yourself. Continuing to take it is a no-brainer, particularly when it's not a tablet, when it's not a, a, a medical thing that you have to ingest. If you're finding that you can use something that's beneficial, then keep using it. There's no need to stop after the fact. You know, So like you're saying, you're going to keep using that gel because for you, that makes you feel good. It actually has a really beneficial effect on you, your body, your hair, your skin, your well-being, why would you stop? Well, exactly. Like I, I have two friends in particular and um, they heard me talking about the menopause and you could see them just sitting and going. And I said, what are you thinking? And she said, well, I, one of them turned around and says, um, I have uh, fibromyalgia and I have this and I have that. I says, when were you diagnosed? Well, nearly forties. This is right. And then I don't, you know, probably chronic body pain. She said, "I says, God, that's awful." I says, "What are you taking?" Oh well, I try to do it naturally, and I try to do this, and I try, but I still have to go back and take taking something that's used so against taking medical treatment from the doctor. And I says, "Right, did you ever think that it may be your hormones, and you don't have that condition at all?" She says, well, that's, I'm sitting listening to you, she says, and, you know, so she did go and look about herself. So I sent her in the right direction to read a few articles, and I said to her, now, read the articles, but look at who's talking. Look at who's talking about this. Look about where that person stands. Look at where the study came from. And she did, and she came back, and she says, what do you call that stuff again? She says, I've made an appointment with the doctor. And I gave her a couple of sachets and uh, warned her not to take them. They're not anything to be messed with. And um, 
she went to her doctor who she had faith in and, and built up a relationship with and the doctor seemed to know a bit about menopause but had never heard of these and of course out come the book and whatever and um she's on it since Stopped all other medications. Stopped all other medications. She's on her gel, and she can. She loves her essential oils. She loves her essential oils, but they just weren't doing the trick. And as I as I said to her, I think the thing that uh, made her think even more is, is if you went to the doctor's now tomorrow, and as good as your essential oils are, which they are very good actually, they're really really good. If he turned around and said to you, you have diabetes, and you need to replace your insulin now. Would you walk away and say, I'm going home to do a batch of essential oils to see how I get on? She goes, oh God, no, no. I says, well, why are your hormones any different? Yeah, very good. Very good point. Why? why is your hormones any different? So she's taken her hormone treatment now and she's learning more and more and more. And she goes, I don't like to admit it, she says, but thanks. <laughs> I don't want to give it to you, but thanks. <laughs> you were right. You were right. <laughs> you were oh, right. And um, and I says, and she, we roared and we laughed. And I says, look, I don't care as long as you're you're getting the, you're on the right track now, and you're yeah. getting looked after, you know. And then another, the other friend then had a wee bit of fatigue. But as she said herself, I don't feel that I need to take anything for it. But when she she learned more, she says. Uh, and she's on the, the Divi gel now. She's on mm. this now. Um, because she wants to protect her future heart health and her bones and her brain health. That's the reason she went on it. And she's Absolutely. taken one a day. She's taken one a day. Yeah, very you know. good. You know, but it, again, it's, it's about bringing the awareness to this. And I think this is exactly what yeah. you're doing. Exactly what you're doing. Everybody mm. needs to start somewhere. And I cannot... I can't imagine a better place to start than here. So it's the Irish Menopausal Mommy Facebook page and the irishmenopausalmommy.com website. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. You will get more um, from, well, you'll get more interaction on, on the Facebook, Facebook page. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for everybody yeah. who's so we will we will eventually go across all social media, but at the moment we're just concentrating on the Facebook page. Perfect. Perfect. You yeah, know, I, 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 this is going to be very, 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 very informative and great crack for people as well. Because, you know, we do, we need a bit of fun with it. We definitely need a bit of fun with it. Well, absolutely. And as I said, you know, the, the, the Facebook page in itself is where the, you know, I'm, you know me now at this stage, Kira, and if there's a bit of banter and a bit of crack to be had, I have it. And sometimes, you know, and I have no filter. You know, I'm yeah. really biting my tongue here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, no, yeah, yeah, you have to have a laugh. I'm all for the crack and all for the banter. But then th there is women who are seriously struggling. Like, um, I wasn't laughing in February 2019 when I was suicidal. I, I was wondering yeah. how, how I was going to end my life, mm -hmm. you know, um, because I didn't want to put my kids through locking me up somewhere and then them coming to visit me and me not knowing who, who they were. I wasn't having none of that, you know. And I always knew within myself that there was so much more in me that I could do. I wasn't sure what it was, but then when this hit and then the more experience I got and the more I learned, I thought, this this is it. I'm in my comfort zone here um, yeah. and I just want to get out and help people. Yeah. So I'm constantly training as well. So there's there's a lot more to the Irish menopause and mummy. Um, you'll see, you know, the whole point of it is of doing this training now live. Uh, we're, we're trying to change the way people think as well mm -hmm. and how they treat themselves. So we're not losing weight because if you lose something, the natural thing to do is go looking for it. Yeah. So when I lose this weight, I don't want it back. Mm -hmm. It can stay gone. So we're body releasing. We're going to be body mm -hmm. releasing. Very good. So that's the way that's going to be. We're going to have a lot of fun doing it. Well, mm. you'll be laughing at me. I'll be 
<laughs> we'll all be laughing together. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, it, it's going to be a, a process, you know, that I'm not going to go back to the way I used to be. Like, there's a lot of people that wouldn't reckon who know me, especially when I was working in the, in the security industry, wouldn't recognize me now because I've got uh, so blown out and, and, and that, you know. Um, but that's okay. You know, this is, this is part of my journey. Mm -hmm. of where I've, like, I don't smoke anymore. Mm -hmm. I've been smoking for 30 plus years. I don't smoke anymore. So, Happy day. you know, it's, do I like the way I am? Of course I don't. Of course I don't. But nobody's going to be able to do anything about that, only me. So it's up to me to do that now. But I've been very fortunate that I have the likes of yourself to keep me in check with my, just the full run of, of my businesses and keeping my lifestyle and, and fitting everything in and, you know, the kick, the butt kicking you be doing and, and, you know, and the last we have, because it is very serious, but then there's, you know, the quality that's in it. Because at the yeah. end of the day, what are we? We're Irish mommies. Mommy, Irish mommies like to know what's going on. They like to be able to control things. They like to be able to do things. Well, now is my time to control me and put yeah. me first. Yeah, I mean, and vital. The whole point, of, like, if anybody ever checks my Facebook page, you'll see I'll, I would share an old thing or whatever. You wouldn't see me doing a live. You wouldn't see me doing a selfie. You, you you wouldn't see me in front of a camera. If I'm in a group photograph, you can see me head sticking out above somebody else's shoulder. <laughs> That's where I am. So now, um, you know, I'm really getting out of my, my box here um, by going out and doing lives and whatever. But here, do you know what it is? It, you know, there's so many other women like me and they need to realise that if you put on a bit of weight and, and you know, you're struggling to get it off again, that's, that's all right. Yeah, that's true. Come along with us and we'll do it together. It's free. Yep. You'll have a laugh. You can have ask all the questions you want. You'll be blinkingly or bluntly told the truth, maybe. Um, okay. Going by my own opinion or experience. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll, you know, and, and we'll do some body releasing together. But we'll have a good quality of lifestyle while we're doing it. Because the whole point of it is, as well, is good, nutritional, wholesome food that mm -hmm. you go to... Um, super value, Aldi, whatever the case may be, you do not need to go to Marks and Spencers or any other yeah. high, you know, you're talking about good quality food here, but not big high quality prices. So tell me how you'd like to, or what you'd like to leave people with as we finish up our interview, what would you like to leave women with? What piece of information or piece of advice or a call to action would you like to leave women with? Okay, ladies. First thing you need to do is join the Irish Menopausal Mommies Facebook page. Have a look through. Um, take your time, kick back, read whatever's there. Make notes even. Um, have a look at the symptom checker. See, is that you? If you don't feel like posting anything to the page, send me a message. I'll answer you. I, it might take a while for me to get through the messages. I will answer you. Um, and maybe you'll feel happy enough then to, to, to speak on the page. Um, but don't ignore what your body is telling you. Do not ignore it. Women need to realise, should they be Irish or not, you need to put yourself first because as much as we have always done everything for everybody else, we still want to continue to do that. But if we're not at ourselves, we can't do it. And believe you me, your body will let you let you down in some shape or form and you'll end up having to suffer. Whereas you could have a good quality of life. So what you need to do is get on the Irish Menopausal page, inform yourself, look at the information in this air, and with the factual evidence based information that's there, you can then make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And move on with your life no matter what you choose to do but look after yourself, put your own self-care first. Then you'll be on top of the world to do whatever you want and help as many others as you want. Brilliant, that's Something brilliant. Like that. So for everybody watching the Irish Menopausal Mommy on Facebook, jump on the page, ask whatever questions you want, start reading, and we'll be looking forward to seeing you and chatting with you in there, okay? Yeah, well, if they jump on the page and then ask to request to join the private page mm -hmm. if they want to speak privately. Perfect. Thank and you so much. And share with all their friends. Tell all their friends. 
absolutely share it with everybody because this is collaborative this is something that we mm. want to get out there so that every woman feels like they can be heard Brilliant. Yeah, at the moment i'll give you the voice but i want to bring as many with me as well to, to, to have you. a voice too good on you thank you so much christine it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you and here's to a brand new movement thank you very much Kira, for having me it's been great we'll talk Take to you again. Chat to you Bye-bye. soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.